guys, welcome back to another editing tutorial with me Sigourney from Sigourney Whitesell Studio. Today we're going to look at the dust and scratches filter in Photoshop and this is a tool that I've only been using for about six months. I was a bit late to the party, very stuck in my ways and didn't realise just how much time and energy this tool saved me in the initial cleanup of retouching. So where we would use this filter is when we've got bits of dust, bits of scratches, unwanted, fine details in your image like here. So these scratches have come from my acrylic water tray, which over time just do get general scratches on them. There's not really a lot you can do, but just be really careful. But I also have these little bubbles that I would painstakingly go through and edit out. And I've got sort of a cat hair here. I've got all these little details that really take away from the cleanliness of the image. So the important thing here is that we want to get rid of all of these finer details that aren't wanted, but maintain this gorgeous looking uh, light spill from the water that's in the, uh, the water bath. So what we're going to start off doing is looking at the original image which is here and the filter that I've already applied so you can see exactly what I mean with the filter unticked the dust and scratches are there again so we want to try and get this effect where we can maintain as much detail as possible in the image that we want and get rid of all the bits that we don't so I'm just going to turn off this group and we'll start going through the method of this tool so we want our background layer I've opened this straight out of uh, Lightroom. There isn't much change to it. We've just got it on and I've realized how much dust and scratches there are. So I'm going to duplicate this layer by dragging it to the box with the plus in it. So the new layer tool, or you can right click and select new layer. What I'm then gonna do is instead of just working the dust and scratches filter directly onto this layer, I'm going to create a smart object which will allow me to re-edit the dust and scratches filter or remove it completely if further down the line I'm not happy with the way the image looks. Now a lot of people tend to just like working in one layer. I prefer to have as many layers with as many steps back as possible just in case anything goes wrong or the client's not happy and I need to go back to a certain sp uh, space instead of constantly having to click my history tool or making snapshots of a history um, to go back to where, where we want it to be. So how we do that is on the layer, I'm gonna right click and go down to convert to smart object. And now this is gonna give me a copy of the layer um, that we can then apply the filter to. We're then gonna go up to filter, we're gonna go to noise and we're gonna go to dust and scratches. We're then going to look at this panel here, which brings up value options for radius and threshold. So I've already done a demo of this to make sure I got the right values. So this is the, the sort of area that I am happy with my image um, to try and get rid of all these bits of scratches and dust. So I will just take this back to the beginning so and show you how it should open. So this is the original image, how it looks. And if you start to move up the radius, you'll start to be able to see that makes the background really blurry. It turns everything blurry and the more you get the radius, the more blurred and combined all the colours start to be. And obviously this is not what we want. We want to find the point where the dust and scratches start to disappear. So I'm going to click on this detail here of scratch, if you can see in this box. This is a really detailed uh, scratch that I want to get rid of. So if I start to click up panel, you can see it sort of starts to get rid of itself. And I think before it was at 24. And then with the threshold, what that does, the further up the slider you go, the more detail comes back into the picture. However, if you start to go too far, it starts to bring a lot more noise back into the image and it starts to look really messy and yeah, just not attractive at all. So I'm gonna take this back down and the aim of the game is to get the balance of the softness of the colors and the detail in the background that you want and blend it 
the smallest amount of detail so you can get rid of those fine lines. So I think, was it five before? I think I'm happy with five. So yeah, when I click on preview now, if I turn that off, that's the original image. And then if I turn it back on, that's what the image looks like with the dust and scratches filter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. And just to demonstrate what I meant with the smart object filter, if you go to your layer panel now, you can see that on your layer is the smart filters and underneath is dust and scratches. I can now easily click that dust and scratches layer off. I can drag it down to the icon and do it that way. Or I can actually double click off the layer and I can re-edit those values if I decide I want a bit of a change. So this makes it more accessible for changes further down the line. However, you can just apply it to the layer without any of this. It will keep your file sizes down. You won't be working in PSBs and you know it just might be less of a headache for you. It depends how confident you are in using the tools. So I'm just gonna click X because we don't wanna make any changes there. And what we wanna do now is create a layer mask on this layer. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom bit of the panel uh, this is an essential classics uh, workspace, so this is why my uh, workflow looks like this. And I'm going to yeah, click on that layer, and then I'm going to click on this button, which is the square with the circle in, and that creates my layer mask. If I click control and pop my mouse over the white box that has now come up, that will do a select of the image. And then I'm just going to click the X button, depending on which, uh, if you can see on the left hand side, um, if I click X, it toggles between the black and the white. If I have it on the white and click delete, that will delete out that part of the layer. So you might be thinking, why have we created this dust and scratches layer? And then we've gone and deleted it out of the image. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to start to paint back out the details. And you could also think, well, if we're going to paint back out the details, then why aren't we just using the um, the healing brush tools and sort of going down that direction because you're still painting out all this detail. I can safely say it is a lot easier to do it this way. You can be a bit more free with your movements when you're painting things back out and it, it just takes far less time for the computer to read the content that's around. So with this black layer selected, we're going to go to our brush tool and we're gonna make sure that we have our brush. You can also click B on your keyboard. What we can also do is just reduce down the brush. So we're sort of getting those finer elements um, and we want an opacity of 100%. So yeah, what we're going to do is use our brush on the layer, which is now black. We can increase or decrease the brush using the square brackets tool. And then we're going to make sure that we've got the white selected in our uh, swatch uh, just there. And then we're going to paint out the dust and scratches. And you can be quite vigorous with how you remove them you can you know just make sure that you're not uh, getting rid of any key details um, and that whatever you go over can afford to have the dust and scratches removed but yeah it takes it out really nicely it still keeps your level of texture and detail in the image and you can be quite quite sparing with the with what you go over it's just really handy um, I'm using my Intuos Pro Wacom to do all this quite quickly ah here we go so you can see here as I started to paint out it's a little bit like when you use frequency separation and you go over sort of like the highlights um, in in that section of the texture layer and frequency separation. So you've got to be super careful about these bits that you're going over. So I would recommend using a much smaller, smaller brush. All of these bits here, because it's on such a 
flat sort of colour, we can afford to go hell for leather on painting things out. And it just starts to make all the difference in the world. Let's just switch off this section here. I mean, yes, you can still see a little bit of the dust and scratches, but it's definitely not as noticeable. And hopefully once all the rest of the editing's done, it you won't be able to see it at all. So that is my tips and tricks for using d dust and scratches filter. Real big helping hand um, takes away all of the faff of doing individual healing brush tool amends or using frequency separation. It doesn't replace these things. You will still need to do them, but this for dust and scratch scratches, especially if you've got a lot of uh, detail you need to get rid of is so handy. So I hope this helps. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments or contact me on social media and we will get back to you. But if there's anything else also that you would like me to go over, let me know and we can kind of put it in the diary to create a new video for you. So enjoy and I hope this helps. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,